Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now we've been talking about the spirit of boldness. And because God is saying, I'm releasing boldness into your life. And, and that's what the Lord told us at the beginning of this month. So everything we've been talking about this month is around that spirit of boldness. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready to make demands for your daily bread? It is your demand you are making. Praise God. So are you ready? Join me now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's your daily bread bread it belongs to you you are not begging god you are asking him to deliver why do we need to ask god to give us what is ours? it's the consciousness that jesus is dealing with the reason he says when you pray say give us this day our daily bread it's not because god forgets there are you see there are things involved in, in the in between heaven and earth okay so when jesus said we should make demand we are acknowledging that we know we are supposed to receive from heaven now that keeps our mind in check to tune it to heaven see and then number two when we speak when we confess now we confess in declaring words we confess in prayers we are letting the angels around us know what we know now that way angels are helped so that they can help us so what do what makes you think angel can help us you see you know I, I wonder how some people study their bible you know I think last uh, last week or a few days ago I shared about Menoah when the angel came now you also remember when I'm giving you instances when God sent angels to go save Lot from Sodom before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember. Now they got in and Lot found them at the gates, welcomed them into his house. And then you know the people gathered and you, you know the story. And then the angels had to come out and make them blind. Then the angels said something to Lot. Do you have anyone here apart from these because because lot was at home with his wife and his two daughters okay so they asked lord do you have anyone here apart from these go get them because we're burning down the city and lot left the angels in his house now think about it i want you to picture these angels as superheroes now there's a reason for that you remember when the men were thronging into the house the angels just came out and made all of them blind okay so they couldn't see now whether it was physical blindness or i think in that case it was it was more physical blindness or you know remember elisha's case when gehazi shouted and said oh master we are surrounded and then he now prayed that god blind their eyes and now that was not physical blindness that was god actually blinded their mind because elijah led that whole army to the city center they couldn't have he couldn't have let them if they were physically blind okay so he blinded their minds to suddenly forget oh you don't know the power of god. praise god you don't know the power of god and, and these are the things that gives us boldness things we have seen with our eyes things we have heard you know there, there are things we we, we have experienced that you, you don't you don't talk to us about the power of God. Praise God. You don't. Because we know it. So now 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 remember, we're talking about angels now and, and and how they operate. So they said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here? Go get them so that we'll save them. And Lot left his house and went to talk to his son-in-laws because Lot had daughters who were already married, okay? So Lot went to talk to his son-in-laws. Say, hey guys, we have to leave this city because it's going to be burnt. And then they mocked him. They laughed at him. He said, please go away. Even his daughters did not follow him, okay? So he left them and then they got back. he got back and what happened? 
Now, have you thought about that? Why did there were two angels at least? Why didn't one of the angels? We now, like I said, I call them superheroes at that for that mission. Okay, that was a superhero kind of mission. So why didn't one of the angels follow Lot to go to um, call the other ones? Angels don't operate like that. Angels function according to instruction and they don't leave their base. See, if God sends an angel to come to your house, if he comes to your house and you're not there, he cannot go look for you where you are. Yes. He will stay in your house and then they have times of operation that they have to leave. There are times angels come physically. In Lot's case, they were not spiritual. It was not a dream. Two physical angels walked into Sodom, met Lot. Okay? The people of Sodom saw them. So they were not spirit beings that Lot was seeing in vision. The men of Sodom saw them and wanted to take them by force. Yes. So, now because they appeared as men. Okay? So, so angels are helped. How do we help angels? When we be at the right place at the right time. So Lot went out, hey, come over to my place so you'll be saved. They refused. Now guess what happened? They were burnt. Lot's other daughters were burnt in Sodom. <sighs> couldn't the angels have gone there to rescue them? They couldn't. Why? They were not at the render, um, rendezvous point. Okay? They were supposed to be at this place. They were supposed to be in this house. Now you remember also when the angels was, you know, Lot was trying to delay, they had to grab him. Before the destruction comes, they had to grab Lot and forced him out. And then they ran, left, and then they told him, run to the fleet to the mountains. And Lot protested, oh, why mountains? See this small village now. Can't I go to this village? And then they let him do what he wanted to do. He said, okay, go. But you know the story, even that place Lot went to, the fire came there. He had to run and ended up in a cave. And you know the story of what happened. Now, it's very important that I said, when we, when we confess, when we speak, what the Holy Ghost puts in your heart to speak, you speak. When you speak, guess what you're doing? And then that's the reason when we pray for people, we use the name of jesus now i hear people argue eh, that is, you don't have to say jesus you don't have to say in the name of jesus we've got so much ignorance in these last days that the bible said knowledge shall fill the earth now it, it's it's funny that and and i pray i pray you know god says i'll give you pastors after my heart i pray i pray you are under the right kind of tutelage you're under the right kind of uh, pastoral cover i pray especially in these last days so you you hear people teach all kinds of things in 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 their bid to say they are knowledgeable now you know they've studied the greek they've studied the hebrew and so they tell you that and, and actually the name of jesus is not jesus is is yeshua okay fine okay now that's for knowledge purpose it doesn't limit or increase the power in that name. Now, we call him Jesus. Okay? And every angel here know that we call him Jesus. So, when we pray and say, in the name of Jesus, every angel in that vicinity know who's talking who, who who he's talking to and you know what i'm talking about so you go there and say i don't want to and you know the, you see, my pastor said we should not pray in the name of jesus we should just say what was so, oh i heal you okay be waiting because you don't realize that angels get involved in these things they do they do and so you announce your presence with something that they recognize now this is not about god hearing you but god knows that god hears my god hears your heart yes 
God hears your heart. But then you remember Daniel prayed, God answered him, immediately he prayed, but then that answer was stalled for 21 days. Not by demon spirit, but by an angel. Yes. Praise God. Now these are things you, you read and then you look, it should give you wisdom. You know, Paul said to concerning Timothy, say, how you from a little child, you've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise. So knowing the Holy Scriptures, knowing the, the Bible will make you wise. If you study it properly, it will make you wise. Because you will see patterns, you will see these things and what will they do to you? They bring knowledge to you. They make you realize that, hey, I shouldn't go this way or I should go this way. Praise God. Now that's what the scripture does to you. So, we, we do these things. Lots of practices we do. It's not because God does not have a way to get to us. The problem has never been God. The problem has been the operation here on earth. So when God gives you certain instructions, when God tells you, for example, he told them in, 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 when they left Egypt, he began to give them different commands. He told them to keep the feast, keep so, so and so feast. He told them to act this way. He told them to tithe. He told them to bring their first fruit. All those things he was telling them. They were because he has given his angels charge concerning them. So now here is God way, God's way of putting his people in check. So that at different points in time, they will manifest their sonship. So you just wake up today and say, oh, we know better. All those things are not supposed to. They, they don't, they don't, they don't. They, because because your, your reasoning. You remember that rich young, no, no, not the rich young ruler, this crime. I met Jesus and he asked him, what is the first commandment? Now he actually asked Jesus, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus said, you know it here, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second is like unto you, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then the man said something to Jesus. He said, you're right. Because God does not delight so much in burnt offerings and sacrifices, but that a man should love him with his heart, with his soul, and with the understanding, and then love his neighbor as himself. And Jesus said to something to him, you are not far from the kingdom. Now, I love that conversation. Now, someone else will read that conversation and say, ah, that means all these offerings were given. No, you don't get it. You didn't get it one bit. And Jesus was not in any way saying that God does not accept sacrifices or offerings. No. But this man had been able to decode. He has been able to reason beyond the physical practice. He has come to the place of understanding of the person of God. So he thought to himself, how does this offering that we give? So, can you imagine I do something wrong and I'll bring a goat and then I burn the goat up and then the smoke is going up and God smells the smoke, that black smoke coming from the goat. You know, it, it goes straight, you know, maybe there's a passageway, there's a tunnel. It goes in and then gets to heaven and God smells it. Hmm. Where is this coming from? Ah, oh, I forgive their sins. You think that's how it works? God gave all those commands not so that he will forgive us. God gave us so that we will feel forgiven. So, because if not, Satan will fill your heart with so much condemnation. You, you remember, I, I don't know why I'm sharing this now. We're, we're talking about the spirit of boldness. You remember these two incidents. Peter and Judas Iscariot, okay? Jesus told both of them before they betrayed him that they were going to do it, okay? He said to Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan have desired to have you and his plan is to sift you as wheat. Then he said, but I have prayed for you so that your faith should not fail. When you are converted, strengthen the brethren. 
And look at the elements of those that prayer. Look at the, the, the facts of it, the words that Jesus used. He says, Satan wants to get a hold of you. And his plan is to destroy you. But then I have prayed for you so that your faith should not fail. So there's a possibility of your faith failing. But Jesus said, I have prayed that your faith should not fail. Then he said, when you are converted, now that's a word of hope he gave to Peter. And you don't know what power that word carries. When you are converted, strengthen the brethren. And those were the words Jesus spoke directly. Now, another time, when, when Peter was speaking and, and telling Jesus, that, look, I will enter anywhere you enter. And Jesus said, you, before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. Before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. Now, Peter felt how that's impossible. And, and the truth is, Peter was not a sellout. I hope you know that. He wasn't. But Jesus was just telling him the events that would take place. That's another day stop. But then look at Judas Iscariot. Jesus said concerning Judas, he said, one of you will betray me. And then he says, it is better for that one that he was never born. Now look at the two. Two of them were his disciples. He foresaw the activity that is going to happen in the coming days um, involving the two of them separately. To one, he said, when you are converted, known as when you change, I have an assignment for you. Now, that, in, that was enough hope that Jesus spoke into Peter's heart. You know, when you finish doing what is wrong, and then you sat, sat, sit down and begin to analyze, what have I just done? And then you remember that Jesus said this will happen. Yeah. I feel so terrible. Hey, but he said, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. So now you're in a fix to run away. Then you remember, he said, strengthen the brethren. Ah, that means there's hope for me. Now that's Peter. But then Judas, he said, it is better for you that you were never born. Now he's done it. He's, he's sold up. He sold him out. Collected money for it. And then he's watched Jesus until Jesus was killed. There was no word of hope that was released for him. There was nothing to hold on to. So what did he do? He went and he hung himself. Why? There was no hope. So the reason God told them to give all those sacrifices is not so that God will see the sacrifice and forgive them. No, it's so that they will feel they have met the requirement for justice and they will be pacified instead of going to destroy themselves. So the offerings was, has never been about God. It has been about us. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. So when they bring those offerings, and God said, this is an atonement offering. And then they bring that atonement offering. And it means all your sins for this year. God have banished it. And it makes you feel, ah, thank God, I survived till the day of atonement. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Thank God, I survived until this time. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. It's for your sake. People don't understand God. Because now, if, if I'm living free of sin, literally, if I'm living free of sin, then I'll now begin to understand that truly, these are not things that affect God. So what really affects God? Huh? Obeying Him, number one. Number two, demonstrating love to one another. And let me wrap up by saying this. This is the area we must exercise boldness. In obeying God and exercising love towards one another. I say that again. This is the area we must show boldness in. Obeying God and doing what? Exercising love towards one another. Praise God. My time is up. Well, listen, 
God is doing a new work in these last days. And I pray you will be a member and a part of what God is doing in these last days. God bless. If you're in the city of Abuja, I invite you for our fellowship meeting this evening. The address is showing on your screen. Uh, or if you can follow us online, please do so today by 6 p.m. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye.